Good morning students. My today's video lecture relates to English book Hornbill for class 11. Today I am going to discuss with you the poem a photograph from that book by Sherlet Olson. Sherlet Olson was born on 20th May 1924 in Henley o Thames, England as the daughter of Douglas Horsfall Dixon and Marjorie Brown. She had a huge passion on writing and was greatly influenced by her father, who was a writer, too. She secured a BA in Literature from Brockenhurst College in London in the year 1953. Shortly, she took writing as career, but also served as the editor for many magazines in the meantime. She married Alan Brownzone on 6 February 1960. They had three children, Janet Sads, Ian Tolson and Stephen Brown's own. But after nine years, they divorced on March 1969. Celtic Christianity influenced her greatly that most of her works or major works like Celtic Alternative in 1987 and Celtic Year in 1993 were on that topic. But these works indeed made her more famous. Let me tell you about what is Celtic. Celtic means a member of ancient people of Western Europe called Celte by Romans. So Shilla Tolson was greatly influenced by this kind of Christianity and her works basically related to Celtic Christianity. Let me tell you about her works Shadows in an Orchard Poems by Scorpion Press in 1960. Circumcisions not such a bad thing after all and other poems by Keepsake Fress in 1970. All right, Auden, I know you are there. A Quick Thought Poems by Offcut Press in 1970. For a Double Time Poems, Scepter Press 1970. The Fault, Dear Brutus, A Zodiac of Sonnets by Keepsake Press 1972. Education in Britain by M. Evans, 1974. Farm Museums and Farm Parks by Sher Publications in 1977. So these are some of the works. Many other works are also there, but right now I'm telling you about these only. Let's discuss the theme of the poem or the central idea of the poem. This poem seems to be a simple one at its surface, but it is certain that it has risen out of very complex emotions. There is the bitterness of loss, the sweet memories of the past, the realization of the brevity. Brevity means briefness or shortness of human life, that human life is very short, and the inability to justify death. The poet has had a very difficult time dealing with her mother's death. Perhaps she had been very close to her mother. That certainly seems to be the case going by this poem. It is clear that her mother used to share her innermost thoughts with the poet. The vice versa must have been true as well in order to cope with this great loss. The poet takes recourse to all the wonderful memories she has of her mother as well as old photographs of her mother and her extended family. The photograph and the memories serve her well. For just a few moments, she finds relief by looking at her mother's sweet face. This makes her realize that life is short and hence we must cherish every moment we get to spend with our loved ones. She takes consolation from the fact that her mother had no great regrets about her own life. Even after all this, the poet cannot justify why her mother had to die and leave her behind. Death is an unavoidable circumstance. As soon as man is born, he is also confined to a death sentence or condemned to a death sentence. We are all aware of this theoretically. Yet when we see someone close to us dying, 
we feel that God has been unjust to us. This is exactly what the poet feels. However, she is unable to vocalize what effect her mother's death has had on her own. She only says that it has left her speechless. Now, children, let's go through the poem, a photograph. The cardboard shows me how it was when the two girl cousins went paddling, each one holding one of my mother's hands and she, the big girl, some 12 years or so. All three stood still to smile through their hair at the uncle with the camera. A sweet face, my mother's, that was before I was born. So, the poetess says that the photograph pasted on the cardboard shows two girl cousins, Betty and Dolly, who went paddling in the sea with the poetess mother. Each of them was holding one of the hands of the poet's mother, who was a big girl of some 12 years or so at that time. Her uncle had a camera. All three stood still facing the camera. They pushed their hair aside to smile. Thus, the photograph presents three smiling faces. The face of the poet's mother is a sweet one. It was of a time before she was born. And the sea, which appears to have changed less, was their terribly transient feet. Some 20-30 years later, she would laugh at the snapshot. See, Betty and Dolly, she would say. And look, how they dressed us for the beach. The sea holiday was her past. Mine is a laughter. Both re with the labored ease of loss. Now she has been dead nearly as many years as that girl lived. And of this circumstance, there is nothing to say at all. It's silence, silences. So, now the poetess wants to say that their feet, which were being washed by seawater for a very short time, have been photographed along with the sea, which appears to have changed less because sea is a physical entity. Human beings, they die and take birth again. But the sea is a physical entity and it remains the same and in the same place. The poet thus directly, indirectly hints that her mother's face has changed over the years. After a lapse of time, say some 20 or 30 years later, the poet's mother would laugh in the snapshot. She would refer to the photograph and recollect how her cousins, Betty and Dolly, had dressed themselves for the beach when they went on a sea holiday. She laughs as she sees the scanty dress. The sea holiday was an event of her past. Her laughter is real and pleasant for the poet. It is a precious memory for her. Both her holiday and her laughter are amusing in an ironic way as they are linked with her loss which requires a false state of freedom from pain. Now, the poet's mother is dead for nearly as many years as that girl in the picture lived. The poet feels at a loss of words to comment on this event, her death. It is a solemn moment and its silence makes her silent. Thus the poetess pays a tribute to her mother. It is the old photograph that moves her to silence. Now let's understand some new words or the difficult words.
the first word is went peddling went peddling the first word is went peddling went peddling means swam in the sea the second second word is transient see children this a uh, little bit complicated word and it means temporary then the next word is snapshot a snapshot means a photograph taken quickly then the next word is re re means amused and disappointed then the next word is labored labored means forced and it is not natural then the next word is circumstance and circumstance means event or situation then the next word is terribly terribly means very much the last word is ease ease means freedom from difficulty now let's understand one figure of speech which has been used here its silence silences see children it's a figure of speech which is known as paradox paradox figure of speech as i told you earlier also and you have done a project based on that it means the word which contradicts itself see a silent thing cannot be made more silent so this its silence and silences is a figure of speech known as paradox so here is the complete explanation of the poem for any queries you can contact me thank you